Mike, good morning. Welcome to the show. And let's start with the big thing going on in Aurora on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Uh, Saturday will be the, the ceremony to open the, the VA hospital. Uh, uh, way over budget, <laughs> way behind schedule. Uh, and I think, let me tell you, I think uh, if we we're going to thank somebody for that, it's the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, I led the fight to, to get the VA uh, removed, uh, their construction management team removed uh, from the project. And, and uh, so in 2015, the Army Corps of en- Engineers uh, took it over, and they've, they've taken this to completion. I, we would not be uh, celebrating on Saturday if not for the Army Corps of Engineers. You know that's that's true, and I am grateful to them. Uh, and I, I I just do want to tell my listeners that Mike Kaufman is being a, a little bit humble here. Um, yes, the the switch to get the army in and the VA people out um, is very important. But it, Mike, it wouldn't have happened without you really leading that charge. And I want to make sure you get the credit you deserve there, even if you don't want to take it. No, thanks. No, I, I was able to pass legislation unanimously in the House that uh, 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 took uh, the, the VA, in effect, uh, out of all four major hospitals that they were working on at, at the time. And so, uh, uh, and if, if, if not for, uh, uh, again, I, I think uh, leading the charge against the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to take over the project, that the Congress would have never, or nor should they, have had confidence in, in funding the project to, to completion, uh, given its cost overruns, given its scheduling delays. Uh, and now it's about holding those individuals who are responsible accountable uh, for what they did. There are certain aspects of the hospital that are going to be huge pluses and state-of-the-art kind of stuff. And then there are some other things like kind of kind of oddly, it's been reported that there's basically half the number of primary care exam rooms as the old hospital. So what are you seeing as the major pluses and the major minuses uh, of the new hospital? And are any of the minuses fixable or is it too late for any of that? Well, the, the pluses are certainly the state-of-the-art technology, the, the medical equipment that, that's there uh, in the hospital. I, I think on, on the negative side, there are probably two. I mean, it's a very inefficient design. It is, it is double the square footage with the same number of beds and with a big problem in that they don't have the appropriate number that they need of these primary care exam rooms to, to basically move all their their personnel who are involved in, out, in that, that outpatient care over to the new hospital from the old hospital. So now they're going to have to keep the first floor of the old hospital open uh, until there can be some new outpatient facility built uh, to house these, uh, uh, I, I don't know what to say, surplus personnel or excess personnel, uh, but but these uh, primary care teams and so wow. it's uh, I mean it, it, this is just just unbelievable incompetence when you talk about a hospital is about five years behind schedule a little over a billion dollars uh, be you know over budget and so uh, I got the the hospital in my district in in January 2013 when they redrew the line mm-hmm. so uh, Congressman Portman was there before me before him uh, Congressman Bob Bopre who did the initial legislation. Uh, that authorized uh, the planning uh, of the hospital and to move forward with the hospital. And so it is, uh, um, you know, I'm glad that it's done. I'm glad that it's going to uh, serve our veterans. Uh, but, but the chapter isn't closed on this yet in terms of trying to hold those responsible accountable. And the fact is they still have so many of the personnel that are here in the VA at senior levels that have their fingerprints all over this mess, and, and how, and, and I've, uh, um, I hope to meet with the new secretary as soon as he's confirmed by the Senate, and, and sit down with him and say, look, there are about 400 people in the VA that are at the senior executive service level, that are at the, just below the political appointees that manage the day-to-day programs at the VA, and, and you need to go through all those positions and say, look, who, um, what, where are their reports, like the government of uh, GAO, government accountability uh, office uh, reports, or uh, inspector general reports that denote failure, where this failure hasn't been corrected, and you've got the same people in leadership there. They've got to go. You've got to clean house. Yeah. I'd, Congress I'd, has given you the authority to do that. And if you don't do that, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, the 
the, the, the bureaucratic incompetence and, and the culture at the VA is not going to change. I, I agree with you, and I would also say that there's probably never been a, a president who has been more overtly in favor of cleaning out incompetent or corrupt bureaucrats. I don't know whether his game is as good as his talk, but at least he's talking it. So hopefully that will at least, you know, kind of grease the skids for the conversation a little bit. Um, sure. uh, Just let me say one point on that. So okay. Shulkin, when I made the decision that Shulkin had to go and begin to press the White House for that, yeah. was actually uh, not over... The, the travel, although that was the catalyst and that was the pro, the, what the president sees on the fact that he had taken this European vacation at taxpayers' expense and then lied to investigators about uh, what he was doing or what he had done. But the fact is that he not only didn't fire the person that was the last person that was in charge of this hospital before the Army Corps of Engineers took over, the last VA person in charge of, military, in charge of uh, this VA construction, didn't fire her, but tried to promote her to make her in charge of construction and contracting, <laughs> both of which are equally in, in a mess. Unbelievable. And so at that point in time, I'd say I met with him and came to the conclusion that he had to go. Yeah. Started leading the fight there. Uh, and the president, I'm glad, seized on that and got rid of him. Did you have uh, any kind of direct conversation with President Trump face-to-face -face or by phone to say Shulkin's got to go? What I did was uh, um, I did a uh, uh, I put my ideas in letters uh, in a letter to him mm -hmm. and uh, in a tweet he did answer it in a tweet and affirmatively that he agreed okay uh, he liked what what the direction that I was going on all right prior to prior to firing so he did acknowledge it and so uh, um, but uh, I'm just just glad to see that 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 that's that's done but but really if I really got to sit down with this new uh, Secretary, I, I, I talked to the acting secretary yesterday uh, and, and told him, but I but really want to sit down with the new secretary. All right, just so just in the end, I don't mean to interrupt you, Mike. Oh. I just I, well, I got about in like 90 seconds, and I need to sure. ask you about something else. So yesterday you introduced something called the 21st Century right. Internet Act, and um, it's it's a very rare occurrence for you and I to disagree on policy, I but I think, uh, <laughs> I, 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 think you're, I think you're way off base on this one, but tell us what it is. Well, I think you. Uh, th this is about net neutrality, and so I think we can agree, and, and it's about whether or not, in my view, it's the, and I, we probably agree on this point, that it's the Congress of the United States that should make the decision and not the uh, FCC, Federal Communications Commission, an unelected uh, uh, commission to make a decision that's so foundational to our economy. And so, because uh, once you go that route, then every new administration can change the policy. And I think this economy needs certainty and uh, startups and, and internet entrepreneurs need certainty going forward as to as to what the rules are going to be. I think we can agree should, there should be you know no throttling, uh, no blocking of content. I don't I agree. We, oh, uh, you don't? No. Oh, I th I thought we would disagree on paid prioritization. No. Well, uh, that too. I'm, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I think the internet uh, infrastructure companies spend billions of dollars to build this stuff, and they own it. And unless there's an, an incredibly compelling evidence that something is being done that's harmful to, to society or to consumers overall, and there isn't, um, it's their property, and, and we should let Democrats try to steal property and not Republicans. Well, I think we, we certainly specialized services are, are covered, uh, like emergency services or that, in, in terms of their ability to, you know, the ISPs to have discriminatory policies there. Uh, but the question is, is, should they be able to have it pick winners and losers when it comes to business data services? And I guess you <laughs> disagree on I'm that. I'm a free market guy. I, you know, <laughs> I think the market will sort will sort all that out. Okay. Um, you, know, I, you know, my take, Mike, is the Internet is what it is because it was deregulated. And I think it's a mistake to think that we know the point at which now it needs to be regulated. You know, that that really troubles me. Well, I think we want to keep an open and free internet, and so uh, we're probably going to disagree with that. But I just think it's, it's this is about you know being pro consumer, pro competition, pro innovation, pro Main Street business, pro First Amendment, and and this um, the bill that I did uh, ensures this country may, remains a global leader.
uh, in the internet policy. So I hope you take a look at the bill, but I, I get your libertarian. Uh, <laughs> Mike, I appreciate your time as always. Uh, and really, you're an absolute champion regarding the VA hospital, although it's late and over budget. Uh, yeah. you, you you can pat yourself a little bit on the back on, on Saturday and keep fighting the fight, as you said you will. Thanks a lot for being here, hey, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan. All right, we'll talk again. All right, there you go, Congressman Mike Kaufman. Uh, I'm not down with this net neutrality thing that he's pushing. I am down with the efforts that he made uh, for the VA hospital.